If you have ever or ever planned to trade based around price action, and what I mean by that is based around support or resistance levels, or based around a trending market, then your ability to correctly identify swing highs and swing lows is going to be the most important part to your trading success. And the reason for that is because in order to identify a trend, you must first correctly identify a swing high and a swing low. In order to identify structure levels, they're only made up of swing highs and swing lows. So without being able to understand how to correctly identify swing highs and lows, you will have a very, very difficult time becoming a profitable price action trader. And that is why in today's video, I'm going to show you an objective way that I use to identify swing highs and lows to annihilate any confusion. If you've ever looked at a chart and been completely confused about how to identify the swing high and the swing low on that chart, by the end of this video, that confusion will be annihilated. And I can't wait to help you do that after the intro and disclaimer, but while they are rolling, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below the video to the right hand side if you're interested in Forex because we come out with free content each and every week here on YouTube. Go ahead and follow us over on Instagram at the trading channel and click that like button for me to help with the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you right after the intro and disclaimer to talk about how to identify swing lows and swing highs correctly. See you soon. And the reason I say that is because identifying a swing ho Oh shit. Anyway, all right, we'll get back into it. <clears throat> Welcome back and first off, let's talk about why it's important to be able to identify swing highs and swing lows correctly. We talked about this a little in the beginning of the video towards that intro and the reason is because in order to identify a trend, you have to understand where the previous swing high and low was located. And in order to identify structure levels, you have to understand what a swing high and a swing low is. So the first thing we're going to do in today's video is check out what a swing high and a swing low is. And for me, a swing high, which is what we're looking at right here, consists of a high that was preceded by two lower high candles. So we have a lower high, a lower high, this being the high, and also preceded by two lower highs and followed by two lower highs. So if you see this type of candlestick pattern, this is a swing high in the way that I identify them. So what we're looking for is a swing high that previously had two lower highs and afterwards had two lower highs. That is a swing high. And to clarify this even further, if this candle was up here like this, it would not matter. And what I mean by that is they don't have to be consecutive. What I'm looking for is this high, any high that was previously preceded by two lower highs, whether they are in consecutive order or not is irrelevant to me. And they're also therefore also followed by two lower highs that also do not have to be consecutive. They can be one higher than the other. That's fine. As long as they're both lower than this top high, that would be a swing high. Now for swing lows, it's a very similar situation. For a swing low, we're looking for a low that was preceded by two higher lows and that's also followed by two higher lows. So this is a pretty easy concept to grasp and we're about to go down to some charts, look at a few examples, but what I'm gonna do here as well, it's the same as with the other. If this low is down here, as we can see, we still have a low followed by two higher lows. They're not consecutive, but that's fine. And vice versa, if this was down here, that's a little crooked of a wick, isn't it? If this was down here, then we still have two higher lows looking left. I know they're not consecutive, but that does not matter when I'm looking at swing levels. Now we're gonna jump down to some charts now that you understand what a swing low and a swing high is. And one more thing I will clarify right before moving on, we're about to move on, is that the color of the swing high or swing low candle is irrelevant as well. So if this was the case on a swing low, then that just means this would be the swing low, right? because this is the candle that has two higher lows preceding it before it and two higher lows after it. So let's do that with our 
example of a swing high. And why don't you tell me now which one of these candles is the swing high? If you said our green candle, you would be correct. And the reason for that is because this green candle has two lower highs looking left and two lower highs looking right. For that reason, this candle would be the swing high candle. So now that you have a grasp again of what a swing high is and what a swing low is, let's go down to the charts. We're gonna look at some examples on live chart data and we're also, after that, gonna break into how we use this to take advantage of markets, how we use this to gain an edge with each and every trade, how we use this type of information to follow a trend or trade at a structure level. We're gonna go through all that right after this, but right now, let's go down to charts and take a look at a few live examples. Here we are on the New Zealand dollar. What I want you to do is see if you can point out all of the swing highs and swing lows that we can see on the chart right now. I'll give you just a few seconds before I start pointing them out. And what we're gonna do in a second is actually, I'm gonna break down how to spot a major swing high and swing low and minor swing highs and lows. There's a very specific way that I use to spot those. You're gonna know that right after this. But this would be the first swing high that we can see. Why is that? Because we have a lower high here, lower high here, lower high here, and lower high here. Next up, the swing low that we're gonna go to is right here. The reason for that is a higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Here is definitely a swing high because we have lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So the drawing of this, if we were drawing in our swing lows and highs, would look like this. And then we would continue, we would push up now. So what did this move do? The move that we just drew with our blue line tool broke above two swing highs. When we have a situation like that, it normally means, and more often than not, means that the trend is going to reverse. So if we were in a downtrend here beforehand, now we have a possible reversal. At this point, is this a swing high? Yes, we have two lower highs here, two lower highs here. So now we're pushing down to this. Is this a swing low? Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So yes, this would be our swing low, pushing up to our swing high because lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, down to the swing low here, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, up to the swing high here because lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Hopefully at this point, this is making sense. Would this be a swing low? Let's ask that question. This right here, would that be a swing low? The answer is no. We have a higher low and a higher low, but we only have one higher low looking to the right. So therefore this would not be a swing low. So when we're drawing this in, we just have a break down of structure, which means what? We're in a possible bearish trend. We're in a possible bearish rotation. We're gonna go over all of this in just a second. Right now I'm just pointing out clear examples on the chart of swing highs and lows. Now that you know and see them happening on a chart, we're gonna break into how to identify trend and structure using swing highs and lows. But one thing you do need to understand right before we jump into this is trading based off a swing high and a swing low, that's not what they're made for because we're not gonna be able to know if this is a swing low until the next two candles or if this is a swing high until the next two candles. They're not a way to predict exactly what price is going to do. They're a way to prepare for price action's next move. They're a way of identifying a trend that you can follow and a way of identifying areas in the market that you're gonna trade based on. They're not potential trades by themselves unless, of course, they are maybe at one of those zones we're talking about and give you an entry reason. So make sure you understand that these are ways of preparing ourselves for a trading opportunity. They're not trading opportunities just by themselves. You're not gonna be pointing out swing lows and swing highs and just trading based off that and making profit. That's not how they work. They're going to be a way of identifying trend and identifying structure to give you an advantage over the market when you do place a trade based on an entry reason. Now, let's talk about how you identify major levels of structure and major swing points in order to identify trends in the market. We're gonna do that right now. All right, here we are one more time on the New Zealand dollar. I have the market replay tool on and I'm gonna point out the swing highs and swing lows, the major swing highs and lows that can help you identify trend to help you out. Now, where's the latest swing low we can see? Is it right here? Is this a swing low? 
No, it is not. So hopefully you said no. This would be the latest swing low we can see, okay? Because we have two preceding candles that are higher highs, higher lows, excuse me, and two candles following that are higher lows. Therefore, this is our most recent swing low. As we push higher, where is our most recent swing high? Right here. Why? Because this high is actually this red candle. This red candle has a lower high preceding and a lower high preceding and two lower lows, after, lower highs afterwards. Therefore, that is our move. We have here to here. Now, when we want to do a pullback move, we're waiting on a low that has two higher high, higher lows before it and two higher, high, higher lows after it. That's getting really confusing for me. Sorry. Whenever it's in my head, it's really easy. Saying it out loud is getting a little bit more difficult, but we're going to move the chart forward now. I'm going to see if you can spot the swing low. Okay. So at this point, can you spot a swing low? Hopefully you said yes. So now this is our new swing low. We have our swing high down to swing low because we have two higher lows before it. And this green candle is also a higher low and a higher low. Therefore here is our next swing low. So we have a move like this down to this. Now we're going to keep moving forward till we see our next swing high. Now, do we have another swing high? The answer is yes. So drawing this would look like so. And at this point we can start reading trend because we have this high that is preceded by two lower highs and afterwards has two lower highs. We now, can look left because we've already drawn in our previous swing high. Our previous swing high was right here. So we have broken and closed above our previous swing high. This means that we are currently in an uptrend. Now this is how you read trend using swing levels. We're currently in an uptrend and what I want to do in order to point out the major swing lows and highs is no matter what happens between where price is right now, between this swing high and this swing low, the next major swing low I will draw is only going to happen if we either break above and close above. Let me change the color of this to make it easier to see. Break above and close above this high or break and close above below this low. If we don't do either of those things, I will not be drawing anything. Okay. Hopefully that's clear. I will not draw another swing low until we either break above this level this high and close above it or break and close below this level. This is how you spot major levels. Everything in between these two levels is just noise. It's not a major swing level until we break and close above here. We can't identify. This is why swing levels are used to identify trends, not to trade based on because you're not going to know the next swing low until this swing high is broken and closed above. That's why we have to wait. And you won't know the next swing low either unless this swing low is broken. Then we can start looking for new swing highs and swing lows in trend. So let's do that now. We'll keep the chart rolling. And as we push down, we'll find our next swing low. Right here, is this our next swing low based on what I just said? No, we have no way to draw this because we don't know if that's going to be the lowest low before the break above this structure level. This structure level is what we're paying attention to. Uh, if the market does not break and close above it with a candle, then we don't know if this is the new swing low or not. It's a minor swing low. It counts as a swing low, but not as the major swing low in the trend of this market. We need this market to break and close above the previous high before we know that major swing low. So let's continue with the chart. Now we have broken and closed above the previous swing high. At this point, I can identify my swing low. My major swing low is going to be, we're going to follow this down backwards. It will be the lowest swing low since the break of this resistance level right here. As long as we did not close below this support level right here. With that being the case, I can now mark this as a major swing low. And with that being the case, I know that we are now in trend unless we break below our previous 
major swing low. I've been going extremely slow here because I want to make sure you understand this concept. In a trending market, this is what we're waiting for. We're waiting on these swing highs to be broken and closed above. At that point, we can mark our major swing low. And the point of doing this and marking that major swing low is so that if price breaks down and breaks below the swing low, we know we're in a possible bearish rotation, bearish reversal. But if we stay above this swing low with price, then we know we are, no matter what happens in between the two levels, we know that we're still in a uptrend and the market has more likelihood of heading higher than breaking down until we break and close up below this level. That's the whole point of this. So now let's speed the process up a little bit. I will be pointing out swing lows and highs with you still as we move forward here. We still haven't come across a new swing high yet. Now we have. Now our new swing high is right here. We have a swing high, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high. Therefore, this is our new swing high. So with that being the case, I would move my horizontal line up. And this is the in-between that I'm seeing, okay? In between this newest swing high and the pr most previous swing low that I talked about how to point out just a second ago, this is the area where I know I'm still in an uptrend. Until the market breaks and closes below this level, then I know I'm in an uptrend. And the likelihood of this market heading higher over heading lower is very high. So let's continue with price action. Can we spot a new swing low yet? No, we cannot because price has not broken above our previous resistance, right? So let's keep it moving. See if we can get a close above or below our two lines here. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of little minor swing lows in through here. There's a lot of minor swing lows. There's, there's a few here that we can see. But because of these minor, that doesn't mean anything. The minor swing lows don't help us any. These major swing lows and highs help us identify a trend. These major swing lows and highs help us identify structure levels. So with that being the case, again, we will just continue here. Loading up price action. Now, we have a break above previous resistance. Can we identify a swing low now? Yes, of course we can. So now we can actually identify the major swing low that I was looking for. The major swing low, since we have now broken above this, I know is right here. Remember, we're just looking back since the breakout. We have the breakout, the lowest low before that breakout, as long as we didn't close below our previous support level, is our major swing low. What that means, and the reason I need to identify that, is that I can now move up my line from the previous swing low, which was right here, to our new swing low. And what that means is that the area of wherever price gets and creates this new swing high, between there and our previous swing low is going to be my still into an uptrend area. That'll be my still in trend area. I'll still be looking for long trades if I'm a trend trader in this entire area because it means that we have a higher likelihood of heading higher than lower until we break and close below this major swing low. So let's continue with price action. And I'll draw in my lines. We're gonna do this one more time. I'm not gonna put you through this for an entire video. I'm gonna do this for one more swing high and low. And then we are going to talk about how to identify structure levels using the same exact tactic with this way of identifying, objective way of identifying swing highs and lows. Here we go with price. Heading higher, heading higher. And now that we've had an actual swing high, this being our new swing high, I can move this red line up. This red line should be green. Let's change that. I can move my line up and now I know between our swing high and swing low is my trend continuation area. Looking for trades to the upside from this area because I know the likelihood of this market going higher is higher than the likelihood of it going lower based on my analysis right now. Let's see what the market does. And we continue higher. So as we continue higher, now can I point out my net, my last swing low? If I go down from the breakout, what am I looking for? Looking for the lowest swing low, which is right here, that had a higher low and a higher low and a higher low and a higher low. So now what would I do? Let's answer this final question before we move on. I know I'm putting you through some slow shit. I'm sorry. This is a, it's a pivotal part of trading though and I need you to understand it in order to help you better your trading career. So where would where would my line be now? Now I would move this line, my trend continuation line is what I call it, 
up to the most previous swing low before the break of my swing high. What this does is means that from wherever price goes to here on this uptrend, whenever we start to reverse, whatever our swing high ends up being, between that area, between the swing high, the newly created, and previous level of structure support, previous major swing low, is my trend continuation area to look for possible uptrades as the market heads higher in this uptrend until my major swing low is broken. So that's how we use this version of identifying swing lows and swing highs in order to identify trends for trend continuation traders. Now, we're going to talk about how to use this really quickly to identify structure levels because it's just as important to understand this in identifying major levels of structure as well. And then we'll break into how to actually trade based around it. This video is getting quite long. Hopefully, I don't have to break it up into two parts. But let's go ahead and go over to how to identify structure levels using objective way of identifying swing lows and swing highs, major swing lows and swing highs. All right, so we're going to use the same chart because these lines are already drawn. It's going to make it a lot easier. And this video is getting quite long, so we're going to speed through this. These same major levels that I was pointing out, the way I was pointing them out for trend, make them major levels of structure when we're in trend. What do I mean by that? This previous resistance level is going to be a good area for me and the way I trade. I'm not suggesting anything. This is for entertainment, not financial advice. Do not take this as financial advice. For me, using a level like the previous level of resistance that we pointed out, the previous swing high that was broken as support is a great place to look for a possible trade. Same thing here. We push up. We then break that level and close above it. So that level becomes a good place to look for possible buying opportunities out of this market in an uptrend. Now, what's a way of trading that? Just randomly, let's do our long position tool, set it at the previous bodies of that high after the breakout and say that we do something like this and trade with a stop loss below our previous swing low because we know we don't want the market to go under that and a target at a 1.5 to 1 risk reward. As a trend continuation trader, that's not a bad way to trade. So at this point, we have a 1.5 risk reward on this trade. We would then also, if this was something that you were trading, you would also place a trade at this line after the breakout. So it would look something like this. You would have your stop loss under the previous swing low like so, and you would have a 1.5 to 1 risk reward. Very similar trade to what we just looked at. Next up, you would have the same thing right here. You would have this move. You would have a position tool as a trend trader sitting at the previous bodies of these highs, which would be right here. And that actually would not have been hit more than likely. So what you would have to do is move up to these highs after the breakout, you're looking for a uh, market to come down into these highs now. And whenever it does, you're placing your order right there with a stop loss right below your previous swing lows. So that would look like this. And a target at a 1.5 would look like this. And so this would be a good way to trade based on trend continuation. This is a way you can look at this trend continuation, these swing highs, major swing highs and major swing lows as levels of opportunity to place trades. And this would be a way of actually trading that, something that you could potentially test as a trend continuation strategy. That, that's how you build a full strategy around these major swing highs and swing lows. And for those of you who are interested, we actually have full strategies built around everything you just learned in this video in the EAP training program. This is not a sales pitch. If you're not super interested in trading, ready to do some work, if you think trading is going to get you a Lamborghini tomorrow, don't worry about it. You, you can go ahead and go. But if you're someone who's ready to actually better themselves as a trader and you're, you're done with the hype, the, you're going to get rich tomorrow from trading, which isn't true. Again, this is not a sales pitch. This will take a lot of work. You will be behind a computer for three to six months testing the strategies that you learn in the EAP training program. You will have some losses and some wins. You won't always win. This is not a sales pitch. I cannot say that enough. I'm only saying this so you're aware. I have built strategies for over a decade. I have those strategies inside the EAP training program. So for those of you who can afford training and are ready to take your trading to the next level and would like to speed that process up, then there is a link in the description for you we actually have a few spots available right now. I'll 
put some of the graduates, recent graduates that came out of the program and actually opened a few spots up, put some of their testimonials and some of their comments on the screen. I like to keep the amount of people in the EAP training program pretty low because I personally mentor every member. Any trading related question you have, I will answer personally and help you on your journey to becoming profitable, which again will take time. So if you're someone who's looking for a get rich quick scheme, obviously this is not something for you. But again, if you can afford training and you're ready to take your trading to the next level and you want to speed your process up to becoming profitable, then it would be a pleasure to have you aboard in the EAP. There is a link for that in the description at the top of the description. There's also a link to some other free trainings that we offer. And finally, make sure you're at least subscribed here. If you're not interested in any of that, that's totally fine. We have tons of free information that if you look through hard enough, can probably help you become a profitable trader just here on YouTube. We'll take more work. It will take more time, but it's doable. So be sure you're subscribed here for more valuable content just like this each and every week. Be sure to click that like button before you go. Look around on the screen. You will see a video that I recommend to you because I think it will also help you on your path to profitable trading just like this video. And follow us over on Instagram. We are going to become more active over there. I keep becoming active on Instagram and then getting too caught up in testing new strategies and just doing shit business related that I stop for a while and then I go back to it. So I promise at this point, I plan to become more active over on Instagram. Follow us over there. With all of that said, I hope you have a green week, green day, green year. Hope you trade green forever. Can't wait to hear from some of you in the EAP training program. Comment with anything that you are struggling with to help us come up with new video ideas. And I will talk to you in the next video. See you soon.